to do it. In the final verses in chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul tells us how to do it right. He tells us how to avoid the pitfalls that the Corinthians were making, how to avoid approaching communion with the wrong attitude or selfishly. Paul tells us how to celebrate communion so that it remains that lasting ordinance of unity within the church. And he gives us several ways to do it. The first thing we see in the final verses of chapter 11 is that we do communion thoughtfully. We take communion thoughtfully. Think about what you are doing as we take the bread and as we take the cup and what it means. Verse 26, Paul says, For whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Think about it. As you are taking communion today, you are proclaiming the Lord's death. This means it's a time for you to reflect on the death of our Lord Jesus. Consider what God gave. That he gave his son as a ransom for you. That your sins would be washed away. Meditate on God's unfailing love. That he would give this sacrifice for you. Remember what price Jesus paid purchase for you eternal life. It's a gift he gave you at a price that you could never hope to pay yourself. If at no other point in your life you focus and you think about the cost of your salvation, of your reconciliation with God, hopefully that's not the case, but if at no other point in your life you're thinking about it, do it as you approach communion. Think about it. It's best to think about and remember. Remember what it brings us back to. You know, Leslie Weatherhead held, uh, she tells the story of a little boy who lost both parents to, to an accident. He was taken to an orphanage, and the first order of business for this boy was to get him a new wardrobe. So they, they got him some new pants, they got him some new shirts, they got him some shiny new shoes. They got him a new hat, but he didn't want the hat. He kept clutching to this old, beat-up one that he had always worn. Finally, the sisters at the orphanage encouraged him to try the hat on, and he did, and he liked it. And so he decided to keep it, but before he gave up that old ratty hat, he took it, he ripped the lining out of, it, of the head of it, and he shoved it in his pocket. The old boy noticed a curious look the sisters were giving him. And so he said, you know what, the lining is part of my mother's dress. It's all I have left of her. I find that it brings me back to her. That's what communion does for us when we take it thoughtfully. It brings us back to what Jesus Christ did for us. It brings us back to his love and his mercy and his work for us brings us back when we take communion thoughtfully. Second, we must take communion worthily. In verse 27, Paul says, Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning. We must draw close to God in communion by paying Him all due respect and reverence. Communion is not something we are to rush into or to rush through. Now, I know how it is. I know how it is the first Sunday of the month we get here, and, and you, know, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a longer service, so you settle in. But, man, you get into the sermon, and, and that guy's been talking for quite a while, and you start fidgeting, and you look at the clock. Everyone look at the clock. That's what time it is, everyone. There it is. When you look at your watches, you're like, oh, and you know, and you're starting to get hungry. Oh, lunch is waiting. I'm going to get the lunch, or the game's coming on, or I've got to get home and prepare dinner for the whole family's coming in. Let's just get to this communion and get it over with. That can be your attitude sometimes. But that's an unworthy manner that we approach communion. It's absent of the respect and reverence for our God. See, the people in Corinth, they approached communion in an unworthy manner, thinking only about themselves, and the Apostle Paul, he chastised them for it. We must not make the same mistake. When we come to the table of the Lord, we leave all selfishness or worldly desires behind. We come with respect and reverence before our holy God, the creator of everything. That's whose table we're coming to. To do anything different sinful. Third, we must take communion repentantly. We have to repent. We must root out all the sin from our lives and turn away from it. Verse 28 says, a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. You ought to examine yourself. That word examine means to test, to approve. It means we search our attitudes, we search our actions, we search our thoughts, we search our words, and we see, is there anything there that God wouldn't approve of? Then we've got to get rid of it. That needs to be laid before God, confessed to God, and we need, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to commit to turning away from all those things. Is there any conflict or resentment or even malice in you for any of your brothers and sisters in Christ here today? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you've gossiped about someone here, or maybe you've lied to them, or you've lied about them, 
Or, or maybe you've spoken harsh words to them. You know what? Maybe you need to go to that person and make peace before you take communion. You certainly need to make peace with God. That's why every month we take time, before we take the bread and the cup, we take that moment of silence to lift our, our, our sins before the Lord. And this is something we do at the beginning of every worship service, but we do it twice on the first week of the month. It gives you that opportunity. If you don't take it seriously that first time, you take it seriously the second time to get right before God and to repent. Because if you don't, well then Paul warns us in verse 29, you eat and drink judgment on yourself. And God will discipline you for it. We don't like to think about these sorts of things. But you know, we have the evidence in Scripture. A number of the Corinthians, they had gotten weak and sick and somebody had died because of their improper behavior and attitude as they approached communion. And that was the discipline that God meted out on the Corinthians. Not as a punishment for them, but to bring them back in the behavior that was beneficial for them in the church. You know, if you come to the table today without repenting, uh, without searching, examining your lives, and confessing your sin and turning away from them, well, God will discipline you. Again, not to be vindictive, but to draw you closer to, to Him. He will do it. Now, the discipline, it may not be sickness, it may not be death, although it could be. But whatever it is, it will be less pleasant than you desire. So Paul's advice to us is to judge ourselves. First, before we come to communion, confess your sin and turn away from it before partaking of the bread and the cup. Repent as you prepare for communion. And finally, fourth, we must take communion considerably. We must be considered. Paul says in verse 33, when you come together to eat, wait for each other. For the Corinthian church, it was a plea for them to consider what was going on around them in the lives of the people. Uh, consider, do they have, does this person have enough to eat? Do I have too much? Can I share? Let's wait and find out. Make sure first that everyone's needs are met. And it's the same plea we get today that we are to put the needs and interests of our brothers and sisters ahead of our own. See, in the eyes of God, every single one of us is a repentant sinner saved by grace. Anyone who follows after Jesus Christ of all of us, no one's better, no one's worse, no one's more important. We ought to be considering everyone as equals. There's a story told about the Duke of Wellington, who at one point uh, went to church, and he stayed afterward for communion, as was his practice. And he came up the side aisle to approach the table for communion, as they did. And uh, on the other side of the church, there was a poor, uh, old man who came up on the other side. He didn't notice that the Duke was approaching the communion table as well. But when that poor old man got up there, the Duke was already there kneeling, and so the poor old man knelt beside him. And this sent a rustle of aggravation through, through, through the congregation. What's going on? Doesn't he know he can't do that? Finally, someone came up to that old man, and he tapped him on the shoulder, and he whispered, please move over from the Duke, or stand, and wait for him to get his communion first. The Duke, he caught all this out of the corner of his eye, and he just reached over, and he grabbed that man's hand. He held tightly and he whispered reverentially. He said, do not stand. Here we are equals. When we approach the table of, of our Lord, we are equals. We need to know our place before God. And we need to understand everybody else's place as well. We must be considerate of them. Scripture tells us in Philippians 2 verse 4 that we are to look not only to our own interests, but to the interests of others. Look around this room at your brothers and sisters. Or can you say you were willing to do that, put their interests before your own? If you were unwilling to do that, you were not prepared yet today to take communion. Because we are told to take communion and be considerate. It's all part of doing communion right. You know, what kind of bread we use or, or how we, we take the cup, those are all part of how we do communion. But those are unimportant things. They don't mean a whole lot. But what does matter is how we approach communion when we do it. What's our attitude? What are our actions? Do we enter into it thoughtfully, remembering what it cost? Do we enter it with reverence and respect for our God? Do we come as repentant hearts? And do we come as a unified, considerate body of believers? That's how we do communion right. And that's what we turn to now. As we look to take a moment of silence, we're going to enter right into communion here today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to Take a moment of silence, and then we are going to serve the elements. Take this time to go before God thoughtfully, to go before God in repentance, and to consider the needs of others.
I want you to take this time to confess.